Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality, health, and well-being into addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, we are here for you. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we're here for you. We can help you out. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, questions or comments or success stories about our Truth Skin Health products or the longevity products or how nutritional supplementation has helped you, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, including my personal favorite nutritional supplement, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, mineral powder that is so much more, electrolyte powder, B vitamin powder, as well as phytonutrient powder. Tastes great. You add a little bit to water, sip on it all day long. If you're like 99% of the people who use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, you'll notice results within 24 to 48 hours. You can find out all about it at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. They can give you the full scoop on all the longevity products, and they can also help you if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and make a little extra money or make a lot of extra money selling longevity products, helping spread the word about the power of power of nutrition, the power of a good nutritional supplement program, you can call 866-735-2470. They can tell you about it, or for a one-time $25 fee, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and sign up right off the website. So also want to remind you to check out our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. I forgot to turn my phone off there. I uh, want to remind you to check out our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all available at truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, oil, silicon, propylene, glycol, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You shouldn't have to pay for water. You shouldn't have to pay for silicon. You shouldn't have to pay for vegetable oil or preservatives or fragrances. And that's why I formulated my Truth Treatment products. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we have been talking about estrogen. I absolutely am fascinated by this stuff. Estrogen is a powerful, powerful hormone. It's nowhere near as powerful, or it's, it's way more powerful, I should say, than other sex hormones, including progesterone and pregnenolone and testosterone. And this accounts for the real problematic nature of this stuff. As we've said, Many times, estrogen is a family of substances throughout, uh, estrogenic-like substances are found throughout nature, and estrogen is not really one substance, it's an entire class of substances that has many, many, many versions. It's a highly misunderstood substance. Most people think of it as a female hormone. As it turns out, it's involved in much more than just female health. Men make estrogen, not as much as women, certainly, but uh, men make it. It plays a role in the health of the brain and the nervous system. It's produced in fat cells. The more body fat you're carrying, the more estrogen you're going to be producing. This is one really important reason for men to lose, for everybody really, to lose body fat. But especially for men, as they get older and men accumulate body fat due to the effects of insulin and, and poor dietary habits, especially eating too much sugar, the more fat we carry as men, the more feminized we become. This can lead to things like erectile dysfunction, gynecomastia, breast development in men. 
It can also be involved in prostate disease and prostate cancer, BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy that affects so many men as they get older, has a relationship to this production of excess estrogen. The prostate is very responsive to fats and to uh, female hormones. Estrogen is involved in the stress response, asthma, and other immune issues, including cancer are associated with estrogen. Levels of estrogen rise when we are under duress. And estrogen breakdown, estrogen metabolism, which is absolutely critical because of estrogen's toxicity, the breakdown and elimination of estrogen is of primary importance, vital, vital importance. And it's all about the digestive system. Estrogen is cleared out by the liver. It requires bile. It requires a healthy intestine, as we've said before. How many of us can say as we get older that all of these systems are operating pristinely? Liver disease affects 100 million Americans. One out of three people have liver disease. That alone is going to whack out estrogen metabolism. Throw in dysbiosis, that is messed up gut bacteria. Throw in irritable bowel syndrome or any kind of digestive health problems. You can see why estrogenic diseases would be an epidemic, which they are. Because the health of the intestines, the health of the digestive tract itself can be compromised by chronic stress, you end up with this vicious downward spiral. So high levels of estrogen, say they're produced in body fat or from exposure to xenoestrogens, high levels of estrogen can cause a, 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 a stress response which will suppress digestive health, which will cause problems with estrogen breakdown and clearance, which will lead to more estrogen in the blood, which will lead to more digestive problems, which will lead to more estrogen in the blood, and you get this vicious downward spiral. How do you break this vicious downward spiral? Well, if you've been listening to this program for any length of time, you know, focus on the digestive system. I know I sound like some kind of food guy, but I'm not. You cannot get healthy if you're sick without focusing on the digestive system. And conversely, simply focusing on the digestive system can mitigate the effects of zillions of health challenges. Pretty much any health challenge, any long-term chronic health challenge can improve when you focus on digestive health. Something as, simply, as simple as not eating. Something as simple as fasting. Something as simple as the Swero V cleanse from Longevity. Half a bottle of Swero V every hour can go a long way towards reducing the symptomology and improving the prognosis of every single long-term chronic health issue you can name. And the effects of dietary strategies on estrogen and estrogen clearance are just one way. This digestive connection to estrogen metabolism and then the accumulation of estrogen points to another very important link, the link between the kinds of foods we eat and the functioning of the estrogen system. The types of food, not just food, but the types of foods. Yes, it's true. Now, if you don't eat at all, you're going, to have a, you're going to provide your digestive system or give your digestive system a food holiday or a break, and you're going to improve digestive health, but choosing different foods can also help. The types of foods we choose to eat affect the liver. The types of, choose, of foods we choose to eat affect the intestine, the microbiome. And eating the wrong kinds of foods, especially high-fat processed foods and starches, FODMAPS-type foods. Perhaps you've heard that term FODMAPS, F-O-D-M-A-P-S. It stands for uh, fructo-oligosaccharides, uh, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, polysaccharides, basically sugars. The FODMAPS diet is about starches and sugars, if you've heard of that term, F-O-D-M-A-P-S, the FODMAPS diet. People who have something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth know, this, know about the FODMAPS diet. And it turns out that these starchy kinds of foods, sweet potatoes and bananas and uh, even things like avocados, can affect some people negatively. If you find that after you eat starchy foods, especially starchy fruits. If you find that you eat, after you eat these starchy foods, you get gassy or bloaty, chances are you may benefit from this FODMAPS diet. You can find out about the, uh, there's a lot of books on the FODMAPS diet. Uh, there's a really cool book, if you have digestive health issues, there's a really cool book that you want to read called The Gut and Psychology Syndrome by Natasha Kinsky Campbell. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll continue when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, and we have got a uh, empty board for you. So if you tried to call in before and got a busy signal, now's the time to call in. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible on the bright side. 
236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, our Truth Skin Health products, anything we're speaking about here today, estrogen metabolism, irritable bowel syndrome, FODMAPs, we're going to be talking about these subjects now for, uh, well, we've been talking for a while. We'll probably talk about these for a few more days. We'll talk about some nutrients that you can use to protect yourself from excess estrogen or so-called estrogen dominance. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all vitamin C packed, not with the cheap stuff, with the good stuff, the fat-soluble stuff, the expensive stuff, the stuff that works. Not all vitamin C works on the skin. There's actually a product, really makes me mad, there's actually a product that goes for about $100 for like an ounce of it. It's 90% water and it's ascorbic acid, the wrong kind of vitamin C. It turns brown right in the bottle and the manufacturers and the salespeople selling the product say, don't worry about it. Yes, worry about it. If it's brown, flush it down. That's my motto. Brown skincare products or browning skincare products or oxidized skincare products, you might be very careful with them. Vitamin C browns very readily. That's why the ascorbic acid form of vitamin C is not the preferred form topically. It's the cheap form, and you can always tell a cheap formulation. It's the ineffective form, and you can always tell an ineffective vitamin C formulation by the appearance of ascorbic acid as the primary or as the feature vitamin C form. We never use ascorbic acid. We use ascorbyl palmitate and ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate in all our Truth Skin Health products because that is the premium form, that is the preferred form, that is the stable form, and that is the most effective form of vitamin C. You can find out about all our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so before we went to break, we're talking about the FODMAPS diet or FODMAPS. FODMAPS is a... Uh, is an acronym for the sugars that are involved in uh, ir- that can be involved in irritable bowel syndrome and ulcerative colitis and other digestive health issues. And it, it points to a very important fact about digestive health. You know, we hear a lot about gluten, and I, I get a little ticked off when I hear uh, when I hear healthcare professionals talking about gluten free, or when people say things like, "Oh, well, I'm gluten free, but I'm still have gas, I'm still bloated." I don't say I get ticked off, but just kind of. It kind of points to the fact that we don't understand digestion or food, really. See, gluten is just one thing that's in foods that can cause a problem. And you can be gluten-free and still be eating the wrong kinds of foods. You could be going gluten-free and still be dealing with leaky gut syndrome and digestive health problems and and gas and bloating and uh, 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 SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, because gluten is just one thing. There's lots of things that can uh, cause a problem, especially starchy, sugary types of substances. The FODMAPS diet, is a FODMAP is an acronym for uh, fructan or fructo oligosaccharides, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, uh, polysaccharides, but you don't have to know about that. Just think starchy, gooey foods, asparagus, artichokes, uh, yams, sweet potatoes, corn, apples, mango, even watermelon, peaches, and plums. These can all cause problems with digestive health. And you could be eating all fruits and all veggies and all organic and still be interacting with these sugars, these saccharides that that can cause intestinal health problems. And you'll be like, well, I'm just eating vegetables. All I eat is asparagus and it's all organic. It doesn't matter. That's why a food diary is so important. And that's why if somebody tells you about gluten-free, they're, they've got one piece of the puzzle, but there's so many more factors that are involved when it comes to digestive health than just gluten. That's why a fast and a food diary are so important. You've got to see what you're reacting to. You could just be eating cabbage and garlic and, and corn and still run into a problem. You could be going gluten-free and still have a problem via this FODMAP, uh, F-O-D-M-A-P, connection to intestinal health. And it's especially relevant if you're dealing with estrogenic health issues. The digestive connection, the food connection between uh, between estrogen and health challenges like cancer or autoimmune disease or Alzheimer's disease is well represented by the idea, by the, the notion of the FODMAPS diet. Reading from an article entitled, oh, and by the way, antibiotics make it worse because antibiotics are going to kill your, uh, uh, kill the microbiome. And the microbiome is, plays a, a critical role in how we process sugars. 
And for that matter, the microbiome plays a major role in uh, how we clear out estrogen. So using, even if you're not taking antibiotics, just using antibiotic or eating antibiotic meats or antibiotic dairy or antibiotics uh, in the water. You could be just drinking tap water. There's antibiotics in the tap water. From an article entitled Estrogens, Breast Cancer, and Intestinal Flora, this is from the journal uh, Reviews of Infectious Diseases, March 1984, quote, the intestinal microflora play a key role in the circulation of estrogens that appear in the bile, in the bile, unquote. The article concluded, quote, it appears that the microflora play a key role in the metabolism of female sex hormones, unquote. Now, if you're on estrogen replacement therapy and you haven't worked on your digestive health, you're in big trouble. If you are exposed to estrogens or your uh, so-called estrogen dominance and you haven't worked on your digestive health, you're in big trouble. If you're taking antibiotics and hormone replacement therapy, you're in extra big trouble. Now, estrogen is an inflammatory hormone. It causes leakiness. It causes digestive issues. And, of course, it's a growth hormone. It stimulates cell division. The way it stimulates cell division, by the way, is related to its leaky or leak-inducing properties. It's permeability-inducing properties. Estrogen makes cells leaky. Why? Well, the way a cell divides is by reaching a certain water threshold. There's a very important connection between the flow of water into a cell and division. Once a, a cell becomes fat enough, due to the influx of water, that triggers cell division. Estrogen makes cells leaky to water. It's a leak-inducing hormone. And this leakiness, this leak promotion, I should say, of cells is how estrogen works to stimulate cell division. It also causes problems with things like um, water retention and inflammation. This leakiness promoting feature that makes cells more permeable can lead to water retention as well as inflammation. And of course, it can also cause or trigger the cell, the division of cells, and that's where cancer comes from. The leak promoting effects of estrogen also affect leaky gut. The same way estrogen promotes uh, cells to become leaky to water, it promotes the leakiness of intestinal cells, leading to toxins and other yucky things getting into the blood. This is the point, this, the juncture, the beginnings of all autoimmune diseases, thus the connection between estrogen and autoimmune diseases, thus the connection, or the reason I should say, why way more women suffer from autoimmune diseases than men. It's the estrogen connection and it's the clearance of estrogen that you wanna focus on. This is why I always tell people with autoimmune diseases, focus on digestive health and working with your estrogen is a great way to do it because estrogen and xenoestrogens and poorly metabolized estrogens induce leaky gut the same way they induce leaky cells. And this whole leaky promotion, uh, leak promoting effect of estrogen is exacerbated by stresses. All kinds of stresses, sugar stresses, mental stresses, emotional stresses, poor sleep, of these stresses make matters worse when it comes to estrogen's leak promoting effects because estrogen itself is a is a stress hormone all right i'm pharmacist benny 442366010 is our number got lines open for you we will return on the bright side right after this all right we are back on the bright side i'm pharmacist benny 442366010 is our number and we do have a bunch of lines open for you at 8442366010 if you are on hold, hang tight. We will definitely get to your call here in just a moment. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, check out our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. We've got a search engine up at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. We've got a search engine up there. And uh, blog posts, news stories, they're all at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and benfuchsarchives.com. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, that's truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, from the New England Journal of Medicine, new blood thinner, better at preventing recurrent blood clots than aspirin. I love that, recurrent blood clots. Why would the body clot? Why would the blood clot recurrently? Why would it keep clotting? In other words, the clots keep coming back. So you take your blood thinner, thins the blood, you stop taking the blood thinner, and you get your clots back. Clots are a sign of a defensive response. That's why. <laughs> clots are linked to stress hormones. Clots are linked to offending agents or toxicity getting into the blood. 
clots kill people. Now, obviously, that's a very important thing. So if you have blood clots, the doctor's going to freak out and he's going to put you on a drug. They'll, they'll give you aspirin if it's mild or they'll give you a nasty drug if it's not mild. But either way, they're not taking care of the problem. The problem is toxicity in the blood. All disease is cell disease and all cell disease is preceded by dirty blood. Dirty blood is clotted blood. Dirty blood is thick blood. How does blood become dirty? Largely through the digestive system. It's not a drug issue. It's not a doctor issue unless it's an emergency, and it can be an emergency. Blood clots are a leading cause of death, of heart disease-related causes of death, or I should say cardiovascular system-related causes of death. It's obviously a big problem, but if you're dealing with thick, sludgy blood, the answer is not prescription medication, except maybe perhaps in the short term. There's a reason why blood thinning drugs are among the most toxic of all the medications you could take, especially warfarin. Everybody knows that that's equal to rat poison. Blood clotting is tightly, tightly regulated. The blood does not just clot accidentally. The blood, does, the, the, uh, blood does not just clot by mistake. There are dozens of different steps, biochemical steps, that have to take place for the blood to clot. It's highly regulated, tightly controlled. As you can imagine, it would be, because the blood is so darn important. If it is clotting, there is a big problem. Something's going wrong. It means something is getting into the body or into the blood that the body is trying to protect itself from. Clotting is a protective response. If you are clotting, it is not a reason to take drugs, except perhaps in the short term. It's a reason to figure out why the body feels like the blood is so toxic, it has to thicken to keep it from distributing its, po distributing its poisons, i.e. work on the gut. Oh, by the way, estrogen leads to blood clots too. Why? Well, we just talked about how estrogen induces leaky gut syndrome, but there's other reasons too. All right, from, uh, from the uh, JAMA Neurology, Journal of American Medi Medical Association Neurology, vitamin E and selenium supplements did not prevent dementia. Oh my God, they gave, they gave older folks vitamin E and selenium and nobody had their Alzheimer's disease prevented. How do you like that? That means vitamin E and selenium are, don't work, quote, don't work, unquote. Baloney, not true. You can't use nutrients to prevent dementia. If you are eating the wrong foods, and if your uh, blood sugar and blood insulin are whacked out. That's not how nutrition works. This is a misunderstanding that's perpetuated by the medical model or by representatives of the medical model, that nutrition doesn't work. In other words, they'll give people vitamin E and see if, it, if their dementia disappears or if they don't get dementia. That's not how nutrition works. Nutrition works hand in hand with good food, good digestion, stable blood sugar, and a good lifestyle a healthy lifestyle. Nutrition supports a healthy lifestyle. Nutrition supports biochemistry. It's not like a drug. It's not like you take vitamin E and selenium and your dementia disappears. That's what they want you to think, that if it doesn't disappear, that this stuff is use useless. That's not true. Quote from the study, quote, the supplemental use of vitamin E and selenium did not forestall dementia and are not recommended as preventative agents, unquote. Only a boneheaded medical professional would say something like that. Of course, vitamin E and selenium don't prevent Alzheimer's disease or anything else, but they're important. They can help prevent it in conjunction with a low blood sugar and low insulin diet, in conjunction with working on digestive health, in conjunction with uh, regulating or at least mitigating the effects of stress, psychological stress and emotional stress. Speaking of stress, from uh, uh, the World Happiness Report, I love that, the World Happiness Report, yes, there is such a thing. Uh, guess what country has topped the list of the World Happiness Report? Norway. Norway is the happiest country on earth, and Americans are getting sadder and sadder. Norway uh, was number four, now it's number one. The previous champ was Denmark, then Switzerland, and then Finland. How do you like that? All the cold Scandinavian countries, those, that's the top five. Canada is number seven. The United States was 14th, uh, it was 13th last year, now it's 14th. And over the years, according to this article, over the years, quote, Americans steadily have been rating themselves as less happy, unquote. Now, I, don't, I hope nobody out there thinks that this is airy fairy. There's a major relationship between happiness and health. Being happy, as, as uh, cliche as that may sound, 
or as simple-minded as that may sound, is a key element in staying healthy. Yes, I know, I'm a chemist and I love nutrition and I love talking about diet and nutrition and all of these all these uh, biochemically related health strategies, but don't underestimate the importance of emotional and mental strategies too, like happiness. Top 10 happiest countries, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Switzerland, Finland, Netherlands, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and Sweden. The saddest countries, Yemen, South Sudan, Liberia, Guinea, Togo, Rwanda, and Syria, and Syria, Tanzan Tanzania, and Burundi. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Susan in California. Good morning, Susan. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. How are you I have doing? a question. Doing good, doing good. I'm at the park with my grandson, so. Okay. Um, I'm a 51-year-old female. Um, I was recently diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. Hyper? Like hyper. hyper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're 51, 5'1"? 51, yes. Okay. Do and, they want to radiate um, it or give you, what do they want to do? Take it out? They gave me Tapasol as okay. treatment. Okay. But um, it, they also diagnosed me with colitis. Uh, and now you now, suppose, I wonder if they're related. You think they're connected? They uh, are sure connected. They are. They're yeah, totally yeah. connected. In fact, if you yeah. deal with your digestive problems, your thyroid will probably, your, uh, your hyperthyroidism will, will actually be, will benefit. Tapazole. And that's the reason for my call, because I do want to take the medications and um, supplements and all that. But I was, I was thinking maybe I should do an enema or some kind of... Well, know, there's lots of things. Cool. Enema's yeah. great. Colonics are great. Uh, they're, they're more short-term than long-term. So, okay. uh, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, you have to, you can't do an enema all the time. So you have to kind yeah. of work on what's getting into the intestine in addition to what's getting out of the intestine. You follow? I mean, you're, clearing the intestine out through an enema or a colonic is definitely good idea, a good idea. But you want to keep okay. the foods from getting in there in the first place. All right. So hang yeah. on. We'll talk about Tapazole okay. and we'll talk about some dietary strategies. Uh, and we got, uh, we got some empty lines here at 844-236-6010 if you want to give us a shout. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We are talking to Susan. Hi, Susan. Okay, so uh, colitis and hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is when the thyroid goes crazy. So uh, methimazole or, or tapazole uh, is the brand name, uh, which is the brand name of methimazole, is an iodine blocking, if you will. It doesn't actually block okay. iodine. What it does is it keeps thyroid hormone from being activated. This is just okay. dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. And by the way, when you stop taking your, th your tapazole, guess what's going to happen? Your it's hyperthyroid gonna is it's going to come back. So, yeah. so you're not solving the problem here. We got to figure out why, why is the thyroid going crazy? Well, first of all, it turns out that iodine, which is important for hypo, poor, poorly functioning thyroid, thyroid, sometimes helps people who have hyperthyroidism. So in my opinion, you might be better off trying a little iodine. And by little, I mean 12 and a half to 25 milligrams a day of something called iodorol. I would definitely be using iodorol if I were you. Uh, that it will counteract some of the effects of the tapazole, but you may get benefit from it. So I would, I would be using iodine. Also, uh, there's minerals that can help kind of balance out iodine. Uh, and one of them in particular, which is really an interesting mineral, is lithium, which a uh, really neat mineral that we don't talk a lot about. Lithium uh, can call, have a calming effect, can have a mood-enhancing effect. People who have bipolar disorder know about lithium. It's, it's the treatment of choice for bipolar issues, but it can have a nice stabilizing and calming effect on the body. You might want to consider five milligrams or so of lithium daily. Um, okay. GABA, G-A-B-A also, you might want to consider that. However, I would really be focusing on digestive health. It's not, uh, I'm not surprised to hear that you also have been diagnosed with colitis because the thyroid and the digestive cyst or digestive health go hand in hand. I should say thyroid health and digestive health go hand in hand. So you okay. need to focus on the gut. Surprise, surprise, if you've been listening to this program, because yeah. that's what I talk about all the time. Now, enema is not a bad idea. I like colonics a little bit better. Um, okay. Make sure that if you're going to do an enema or colonic, that you replace your bacteria. So a, a good colonic therapist understands this, and they'll actually put bacteria back in your gut, or, or back in the uh, 
uh, in the intestine, uh, repopulate the gut with, with bacteria. Make sure you're using fermented foods and probiotics, which are very important. Fermented cabbage and fermented vegetables especially. When people think fermented foods a lot of times, they'll think about yogurt and kefir, which is, can be a good source of fermented foods uh, of, of bacteria, but the problem is some folks react to the dairy. So I would be sticking with veggies. Uh, okay. Use vegetable juices, but most important is you're going to want to fast or do a swear OV cleanse, either way. A swear OV cleanse is, it gives you some energy for folks who absolutely can't fast, but either a complete fast or a swear OV cleanse for two or three days. Then do a food diary where you eat one kind of food and you keep track of how it affects your colitis. If it causes gas or bloating or diarrhea or constipation, that's a food that you want to eliminate. And then in, in addition, to using a fasting strategy and elimination diet and the food diary, and in, in addition to using probiotics, there's wonderful supplements that can help you with digestive health. For one, uh, chicken soup, homemade chicken soup, and, and cartilage-containing products can have a coating and soothing and healing effect on the intestine. Anything that has cartilage in it, bone soup, of course, is my favorite way to get cartilage into the body, but you can use cartilage supplements, or you can use substances that are in cartilage, like glucosamine. Glucosamine for digestive health. Now, if you've been listening to this program, that's not a surprise, but if you're not a regular listener, that may come as a big surprise because everybody knows that glucosamine is important for the joints, but not that many people realize that glucosamine is important for the digestive system either uh, as well. So using glucosamine supplements, uh, also uh, high uronic acid supplements can be helpful. Anything slimy can have a coating and soothing effect on the gut, and that means algae and aloe and noni, uh, all of which have a slimy kind of substance. The Fucoid Z from Longevity can also have a nice coating and soothing effect on the gut as well. Make sure you're getting enough fiber. Fiber is very important for digestive health. Uh, you may want to start off very slowly, though, with your fiber. If, you're, if you have colitis, too much fiber all at once may give you some gas or bloating or, or diarrhea. You don't want that. So start off slowly. Grind up flax seeds uh, and put the flaxseed powder. It's very important that the flaxseed is made into a powder. Uh, if it's not ground up or if it's not in a powder form, you're not going to be able to absorb the nutrients or the fiber, I should say, from the flaxseed. So grind up the flaxseed, put it in water, drink a table, uh, take a tablespoon of flaxseed in a glass of water and drink that down once a day. Maybe increase to two, maybe even three tablespoons. You want your stools to be nice and, and, and kind of solid and, and, and have a little bulk to them. Uh, and the flaxseed will help. The flaxseed will also help balance out estrogen, which can be important for thyroid health. And the flaxseed will help clear out excess estrogen and, of course, flax. Seed is also a good source of protein and fatty vitamins that can help help you with uh, help you with the thyroid and help you with the intestine as well. There's tons more things you could do, but that's a great place for you to start, Susan. Yeah, start. And I hope we helped you out. Thanks for your call. Oh, Appreciate definitely. it. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Day. Take care. Have a great day. All right. Let's move. Uh, let's stay in California and welcome Benny to the bright side. Good morning, Benny. Hi. Good morning. Hey. Um, good morning. I've, I've been uh, asking and uh, doing a raw food diet and taking probiotics and enzymes. Uh, but my question is, I break out a lot on my forehead, and what can I use topically? Because it takes okay. a long time for my acne to heal on my forehead. Okay, on the much. forehead, on the forehead, you're dealing with male hormones, typically. Okay, it's typically a male hormone issue, how your body's processing male hormones. Are you, you're Hispanic, I take it, correct? Yeah. Are you dark skin? Uh, not really. No, do you tend to be oily? Do you, do you tend to be oily or dry? Uh, I would say dry. You tend to be dry? Okay, I was going to say I would well, I would have guessed oily, but uh, nonetheless, a couple things you want to do. First of all, zinc is the most important nutrient you could take for androgenic male hormone related acne, which is what it is on the forehead or in the T-zone in general. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. That alone will make a huge difference. In addition, you want to make sure you're using vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day, and I would be using vitamin B5 with all of the B complex together, but high doses of B5, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams a day of vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, along with the entire complex. You can go get B5 capsules at the health food store and then take it with your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You can also use my blemish repair complex, which you can get off of uh, truthtreatments.com. Blemish Repair Complex is made with vitamin A, with zinc, with B5, with all the nutrients that I... I'm going to let you go, Benny. we got a really, really bad connection. 
Okay, so I'm going to let you go here. I hope you can hear me on the radio here. Uh, uh, vitamin A, zinc, uh, vitamin B5, selenium can also help male hormone-related acne. We're going to talk about selenium and its relationship to estrogen here in the coming days. But selenium is very important for all acne issues, all skin health issues, really, including psoriasis and eczema. Uh, 200 to 600 micrograms a day of the ultimate selenium. You'll find that at... Uh, uh, at uh, all the longevity sites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. I also do put selenium in my blemish repair complex, which I formulated to include all the androgenic acne supplements and all the liver health sup uh, nutrients that you would ordinarily have to buy as individual supplements. You'll find them in my Truth Treatments, uh, Truth Treatments Blemish Repair Complex formulation. Also, topically, you might want to consider retinol. Uh, of course, you can get a 5% retinol, Truth 5% retinol gel at truthtreatments.com. Also, alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic acid or lactic acid used on a mm, daily or even every other day basis can help with that forehead acne, which is usually related to oily skin. Benny said he didn't have oily skin. Typically, that is related to oily skin, so I'm not sure what that would be about. Um, I'm guessing Benny has his skin is a little more oily than, than, he, uh, than he thinks. Anyway. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Matthew in Texas. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Matthew. Hey, Pharmacist Ben. How's it going? Awesome, man. Hey, I've called you once before. I run the Pilates studio in Austin. Nice. And a lot of my ladies come in asking questions about hyperthyroidism versus Hypo hypothyroidism. Okay, gotcha. So hyper is when the thyroid is working too actively, it's working too fast. Hypo is when it's working too slow. They may be more related than people think. Uh, and I do know of, of people who benefit from iodine for both hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism, however, requires a calming down of the body. Now the body can become, the metabolism can become jacked up. And by the way, people who have hyperthyroidism will be sweaty and they'll have high blood pressure and anxiety and insomnia and jitteriness and shakiness. And it's just a really unpleasant condition. When it's really bad, it can cause something called the hyperthyroid storm, which is an awful, awful, miserable condition. Uh, but in any case, hyperthyroidism is the thyroid moving too fast. Hypothyroidism is the thyroid moving too slow. Under both conditions, you want to focus on your triangle of disease. Disease, both of them. That is the digestive okay. system, the blood sugar system, and then calming the body down. We're out of time, Matthew. Okay. I apologize. If you want to call back tomorrow, we can finish talking about the subject. Thank you for your call. I'll give your Pilates studio a quick plug, real quick, Matthew. Yeah, me body Pilates in Austin. I listen to the him every day. He's amazing. Austin's great. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. All his recommendations in our studio. All his recommendations. Look Oh, you're the man. Thank you so much, Matthew. I'm going to let you go. We're out of time. Thanks, Matthew. Appreciate it. That's it for now. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.